them come. This is their fate. All right, all right. Welcome back to the House of Wolves podcast. I am your host, Deontay, here with my near and dear friends, Jalen and Josh. Uh, today, we got a few topics. We're going to be talking about a few things, as usual. Uh, but before we start, as the, the norm, I got to know, because I really haven't talked to you guys in a couple, you know, it's been a while, actually. Josh, Jalen. How are you guys doing? What's your man. what's your what's your day to day looking like? Your trouble, man. It sounds like you your missed will. us, man. It only been like two days, man. It's not like you ain't talked to you us. Know, in a week, you know you what? Us. I can I can say that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't talk to nobody else on like this this type of you know all the time. I talk to people when they call me, uh, but most of the time I talk to y'all more often than most, pretty much. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, I could. It could possibly be some misment, you know, little little feelings there, but um, but yeah, so tongue... Josh missed you. You know, he don't yeah, care no, about you this. Know Josh don't care, man. <laughs> he don't care about my feelings. He said feelings. He said, hey, don't get that out of your boy. But yeah, how y'all doing? What y'all been up to? Mm, same old, same old, man. Not a whole lot. Uh, Not a whole lot. It is. Literally the same thing, bro. School, school. Yeah, maintain, maintain. Trying to maintain the struggle. Uh, I'm trying to think anything exciting. Yeah, I'm gonna table that. I'm gonna pass it to Josh though. I'm gonna give you a baton pass. <laughs> Man, I'm feeling like the uh, chosen undead from <laughs> Dreams out here. <laughs> um, Can you get rekindled? Yeah, because it, it it's like midterms, and so I had to work on my thesis and like making the game and it's you know just a lot of work but like just trying to get ready for the deadline i what's today i pulled an all-nighter sunday then Mm. like monday uh slept well it wasn't an all-nighter on sunday but it was i worked late until like four i slept got up at like 12 and they worked from 12 to 12 from Monday to Tuesday, and then went to class, and then been in class all day. So, yeah, that that man's a uh, little bit Captain Insane all right now. I don't know what's what's wrong with that man, but uh, <laughs> I understand the struggle. It's it's very much a a uh, a mindset of determination that's great and all, and I'm glad you're here for our little old podcast, and you're you're not choosing sleep because I sure would. Um, so we appreciate you, Josh, and uh, thanks for stopping by. (laughs) Easy, easy for a clone to say. Easy for a clone to say. Yeah. Oh my god. Jalen, he would have been catching Z's. Oh my bad. Oh my bad. I fell asleep. (laughs) Yeah, I'd be in clinicals. Like I remember, I was looking one patient dead in his eye and started dozing off. I was just like, like, man, my body shut down, bro. It's just not working. Did he tell us that he uh last night he thought he woke up in the next dimension? (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> he went to sleep for 30 minutes, man. thought he woke up in another dimension. He said, man, what's up? That junk was tragic, bro. He said, man, I just slept 12 I hours, good. Hunter's <laughs> dream. Hey, I was knocked. I'm like, man, I was trying to I was trying to send a text message. I'm like, man, I must have fell asleep. I'm like, damn, it was like 5 30, bro. I woke up, it was like 6 12. I'm like, yeah. damn, I gotta go to clinical, bro. Like, I didn't fell asleep on a whole couch. I ain't set my alarm or nothing, bro, and I feel tired still. I thought the sun was coming up the whole time. Sun was going down. Whole time. I'm like, the whole time I was like sleep for like 40 minutes. Daylight savings, you ain't know nothing about. Man. That's that's funny, though. He said, yeah. He went to sleep for, I don't know how long he went to sleep, but I know you said you woke up, thought it was 12 hours. It was like a time skip. I was like, man, yeah. I can't believe I missed all of that good time. Bro, I was like, damn, I ain't never slept for 12 hours before. That's crazy, man. I'm like, how did I even do that? I must have been real tired. Yeah. And I just sat there and stared for like 10 seconds. I'm like, hold on. I'm like, man, I don't still... even know how I used to <laughs> stay up for longer than I can't use. I, I don't remember a time now where I can't get, I could, I, I could miss like seven hours of sleep. 
I can't remember time no more. I'd be mad. I'd be mad now. I'm like, bro, I need my sleep, G. So that's because you're a clone. Whatever. Clones need their sleep, bro. Clones need their sleep. I guess I, I've been a clone since I uh. What, 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 what was the first time I've been kind of a clone? Was it was my wedding day. Oh yeah, I think it was something like day. that. It was, it was clone, clone. Uh, I got replicated by Terrence. I mean, Clarence. I mean, Terrence. <laughs> and glitch in the system, uh, uh, I guess. Thanks, I mean, I've been a clone ever Terrence. since, people. Uh, Terrence made up a lie, and now I'm a clone for the rest of my life. Bro, that jump was funny. That was back in 2018. Yeah, that was a while ago. But, shoot. No, nah, everything been straight, man. Just trying to make sure I don't fall asleep. Uh... And then I really got this like project that I'm supposed to be doing, and I ain't been doing the best job at it. But you yeah. too, man. You, you you you. Well, Josh not really procrastinating. He's more so just got a lot of stuff. But why are you procrastinating, sir? Man, I just been running a roadblock with that mug, and I'm tired, bro. Like, mm. it's I'm just, just, I'm just defeated. Just, you just always look at it one step at a time. You know how I do this. You probably just just like I said, procrastinating. Just one step at a time. And then it's about the end of it, you look up, a lot of steps, all the steps done. But um, Yeah, I'm gonna get to it, man. I just ain't I just ain't dead. I'm finna uh procrastinate. Either do it tonight or tomorrow or something like that. I just been trying to like make sure I stay in the gym and stuff and be consistent. I'm trying to get back to dunking and stuff like that and just stay fit. Like I'm trying to have, be ready for the summertime. Oh, but yeah. I gotta get through this school. Man trying so. to hit the hit the uh, beach with no shirt, John. You see that? You hear this man? <laughs> he trying to. He obviously. I don't know who he trying to impress. Maybe himself. That's myself. the that's the best that's the best type person to impress, I suppose. Just impressing yourself. I get it. I understand it. I feel it. Uh, no, that's my New Year resolution. Chicago got consistent. beaches. Chicago got beach. Do that. Yeah. I just want to be consistent. That's really about it. Just proving myself that I can be consistent and follow through with what I say I'm going to do. So he gonna be running his little uh, miles on. He gonna, well, not little miles because I can't do it. But he gonna be running those miles at the, on the beach, man. Shirt off. Oh my goodness, I can see shirt it. Shirt off. My shirt off. Terrible. My shirt off. My, <laughs> <laughs> my shirt off. My shirt uh, off. Yeah. Don't 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 get too much unwanted attention, good sir. Right, but um, okay. right, yeah. Okay, well, I'm same old, same old. You ain't been doing much. Just working the job as same usual. Old, same old. You're going to be taking care of three individuals. I'm trying to tell you, they evolving day by day, ain't they? It's crazy, G. Uh, they just evolving. started smiling. They started, now we get paid in smiles. Mm-hmm. And, um, what is it was it, smiles, and he, he just started, well, which I don't know how he's doing that already, but he's rolling over now, so... Amir is advanced. He's advancing pretty fast. So he's rolling mm-hmm. over. So that's what we get paid in. Drinking all that milk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. He, that's all he do. That's the Y'all get some church's chicken, ain't y'all? I ain't getting no churches. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, man. I should tell him about too. this whole adventure to get some church's chicken, man. Oh, man. I wish I had. To, I could show y'all the photos. Uh, but. Yeah, man, this church's chicken was a straight abandoned, look like a, like slumlords live there, like it was a slumlord place. Uh, <laughs> but you know that man. always they always had the best yik. So we, I, I ventured over there right after work trying to get you know please the wife because she was hounding me for days. I'm like, man, I'm telling you, church's chicken tastes just like the other processed chicken. <laughs> <laughs> we need to find somewhere that's nice but she wouldn't take no for an answer she needed them honey biscuits so uh we went to i went to churches uh immediately too many red flags you know they basically they drive away or they drive through is the alley with the garbage mm. so I'm, I'm looking at this one pole they got right there to stop people from hitting the wall hitting the uh the, the, the you know the building that mug scraped to it. <laughs> to the gods so i know everybody coming through that mud slide <laughs> <laughs> but that was first red flag i said let me, let me make sure i hit these corners right man they, they already look like it's already bad out here like they they ain't get the, the best civil engineer in this parking lot so uh I, that's the first problem that i saw then i i, I hit the corner i see the 
the building. That mug, that mug is missing some of the paneling. What's they call those things? I forget the, the things they put under it. They're, I forget what they call it, but essentially the, the paneling that supposed to make it look nice on the outside, that's all gone. So you see nothing but raw wood and like it's been straight but termites up in that mug. Then I get around to the uh the box just to order the food and they got the 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 screen up so you can see half the only half the menu so I'm just trying to go off of what I can see so I just told her <laughs> give me the combo. <laughs> I said give me the advertised combo at the top because I couldn't see nothing else. So after I tell her to give me the combo, I tell her my drinks. I get to the window. And she give me my food. I'm missing the drinks. I open up the box. I'm missing the uh the biscuit. So she sit there. She gonna tell me, no, nah, you ain't tell me the combo. You just told me you wanted six pieces of chicken. I said, <laughs> man, ain't nobody in the in the history of ordering chicken. Just wanted straight chicken and nothing else. I literally told you the combo. So not only did <laughs> Not only did I, they, they first they tried to make me wrap around because so they, they couldn't like back out the order, bruh. Like I said, trying to get this food was like a, a task, but ended up getting the biscuits and the drinks for free because I wasn't leaving. I said, I got, I got, I got my lady at home. She, she want these honey biscuits. I ain't leaving it till I get them. I, I smooth talked them. I got them laughing. And they gave me my biscuits. They gave me my drinks. I dipped. But anyways, to all that to be said, don't go to church's chicken. If you want some chicken, man, just just fry it at home, bro. Because it ain't <laughs> worth it. Honey biscuit was I. Right. Chicken was f- flavorless. And it, it was crispy, but it was flavorless. Like, I, I shouldn't be needing to have to put too much, you know, seasoning on this thing. So all that to be said. It was a waste of time. <laughs> the chicken was the greasiest of the greasy. You know how churches is. That mug got a grease bag. I don't know if you ever had churches, Jalen, but basically it's just grease. It. It's fried grease, bro. Mm-hmm. Um, like the episode of SpongeBob when it was cooking grease. <laughs> yeah. Grease chips. Yes, yes, yes. Grease yes, soup. Yes. yes, man. That's pretty much what it is. But that was the adventure that I should have never went on. That was the side quest that I ne- should have never took. You know, the ones where they tell you, you go get three things and then you end up fighting six other things. That's like, then when you get to the reward, it dropped like 2000 uh gill or something. <laughs> it was not no. worth your time. So that's Gosh, what I'm saying. He, like Final Fantasy. he said gill. Yeah, well, I think in gill. You said um, gold, yeah. coins, all that. He said gill. Gill, gill was he uh, like last thing I any. played. He like Final we, Fantasy. We gonna get the Square Enix, Enix in this mug anyway. So first off, don't 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 act like Square Enix ain't finna get this smoke today. But uh, yeah, oh, I, I, said I said Gil. I said Gil. You saying Gil like you like Final Fantasy? Clearly, you support Square <laughs> Enix. So go ahead and talk about it. Let's talk about it. Oh my God! See, I told you anytime you mention anything about Square Enix, these fanboys go crazy. Go ahead and talk so, about it. you brought you brought it up. Man, all I said was I was trying to make a point. I was trying to get bring down to y'all level, and you know what you do? You try to make it a spin it. You you a you a spin master. It's a, like why you spinning this? Like I like these people, man. Josh, you I, said anything about Gil today, man? Or oh that came to his head. <laughs> anyway, I thought he was gonna say gold or coins or something. He said Gil. I'm like, all right, let's talk about it. Oh my god. You done? Is you finished? You finished? Yeah, I ain't got no more talk in me. I ain't got no more talk in me. Good. (laughs) Uh, But yeah, side quests, not worth it. Um, But moving on into the actual meat and potatoes of this here episode, we're going to be talking about a few things. First thing I want to talk about, speaking of Square Enix, uh, Mm -hmm. Babylon Mm -hmm. Fall. One of the worst rated exclusives on the PlayStation 5. Beating out <laughs> that and, and and that's a that's a actual live service RPG. Is am I am I wrong in saying that? It's a live service RPG. I'm yeah. pretty sure. Live service so I got the gill. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, but they also fell short of even Godfall standards. And we know that game sucked. So uh, let's talk about it. Square Enix, Platinum Games. Should have been a match made in heaven. What happened? Them Josh boys playing no game. Man, but them Square Enix, you just was talking about them, man. That's It's very, it's very relevant to this conversation. Square Enix was the developer. So let's talk about that Babylon. Uh, what happened? Um, yeah, so y'all probably don't remember when they announced Babylon Fall. I think it was like either like one of those games that were announced right before the PS5 was announced or it was a part of the PS5 announcement. Mm -hmm. Um, and where it was just like, hey, we making, um, we just finished near Automata with Square Enix and Platinum Games. And we know people love that game. So we going to do another game. It's a fantasy game. You're gonna have like giant suits of armor and blah blah blah. And it's gonna have good combat. And from what I heard, that's what they started working on. But Square Enix were wasn't happy with it because it wasn't um live service enough. So they like had them redo stuff and change it and uh, I don't know if they gave them more money, but they just, just had to go back to the drawing board a couple of times. And what ended up happening is that they reworked so many things to make it like a live service that now it just sucks. Um, Cause I remember hearing like a, a year ago when they had their first open beta, that people was like, Oh, the armor in this game feel weird. Like it looked familiar. And I'm trying to figure out where it came from. And that's because since it's Square Enix, they literally, like literally copy pasted the low level armor, like level one through twenty from Final Fantasy fourteen, their other MMO. Like they took the low level armor and dropped it in Babylon's Fall, and that's the armor that you start with. <laughs> um, and I, I don't under because like that's like we all know like platinum. Like even if you don't like all the games, they they make good combat. Like it's flashy. It seems like they know what they're doing combat wise. So I feel like as long as the RPG function is just like well done, it, it should have just been like a a solid game. But it, it seems like Square Enix, and we already know like they mess up Avengers as well. So it seems like Square Enix just ugged it all the way up. So it's ugly, whack, old content. So what I'm from what I'm seeing is basically a a poor man's Final Fantasy fourteen. Uh they that's what they wanted it Wait, to be, but it, it, it doesn't have anything 14? similar to fourteen other than yeah, they took the armor from it. Oh, it's not really similar at all in regards to like combat or No, anything? it's like an action RPG, like it's near oh, automatic action. Okay, combat, you. but it's just not polished because they have to like keep restarting the game. Is yeah, the story right told cheeks. in the same way? I wonder. I wonder if it's the story is told in this. Well, I'm assuming every story is told the same way, kind of with these kind of games. So never mind. But um, overall, it looks scratchy. Um, I I just and can't understand how they had so many issues with that game. Like y'all know when the beta came out, mm -hmm. like the open beta for that game, it came out the day Elder Ring came out. And, you know, nobody played that open beta and people were saying it was trash. And then it came out like a week later. And it's not like a free to play um, game. I think it's a full price game. Big bands. You got to pay big bands for it. Sheesh. So they just set themselves up for failure on this one, basically. Yeah. Um. So I like Final Fantasy. I like some Square Enix games. Uh, but they live service. How much service. you paying for it? Click, yeah. click, go, go straight from there. Which, how much you gonna pay for it if you get it? Uh, this game, I'm not gonna get it. You know, it was like <laughs> from all the stuff I've seen, it was not interesting. Like two dollars. It was like another near Automata. Like sure, I could like deal with that because at least Platinum Bold made like, a fun game. <laughs> but it, even Platinum <laughs> didn't get the shine here, so I ain't even looking for it. 
Dang. So, not even $4, huh? Okay. Well, I heard the microtransactions are even worse. So uh, yeah, I, I didn't even see any of his monetization, but I believe it. I think the microtransactions is what got it lower than Godfall, to be honest. Because mm. um, I think overall it's probably a little bit better, but um, because how much they, how much they the ask micro, they like how much they, about the drop on it, Deontay? Microtransactions. You know, I'm showing micro that they have a yeah. season <laughs> one. The premium is complimentary for season one, but they're ten dollars moving forward. So every season you get that, and it's largely cosmetics. Um, but there are some, you know, rewards that are like performance based. So like extra, like create weapons and armor, like materials basically. So you can pay to win. Mm -hmm. So you can essentially, you know, pay to win, but. <sighs> what's the point of putting money into this game at all? What's the point of even playing it? it they didn't take the time to even think, make it, make it right. So, um, yeah, pretty sad actually. <laughs> but uh, it's not that yeah. bad. It's not like I. I just wish that these, well, someone I hold to a higher pristine. But at the same time. I like really like platinum and platinum hasn't come out with a game in a minute. At least I don't think they have. Well, they come out near. Yeah, but that's yeah, not at something. the near that was like the last game was Astral Chain. Yeah. Um, and that was pretty good. I liked it a lot, but I think because a lot of people have been talking about platinum a lot, especially with like Sony and everybody buying companies, is platinum is not in like a good place financially because like it started with like they didn't have a lot of money in the first place and um so they had to keep asking people like hey nintendo can you make bayonetta 2 for us or pay for it uh, blah 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 um and then scalebound got canceled in which that was like supposed to be a, a big paycheck for them um they they lucked out with near they made a lot of money off well they made money off of it but i don't know if they made a lot of money because like mm -hmm. i don't think it everybody knew it was gonna be a hit before it came out so they might I thought they came out the other near the other That's near not, replicant people is liked. Not there. oh yeah they didn't make uh replicant square oh, enix okay. just uh took what they learned from them and made replicant well replicant um, was most so i thought it was a remaster so it wasn't like really they put on amount of combat in it, so it's still oh, gotcha, a remaster, gotcha. but with new combat. Um, yeah. Anyways, that basically outside of Near and Bayonetta Two, which came out like six years ago, they ain't really been getting a lot of money. Yeah, Astral Chain really was all right, for nothing. but it wasn't like a huge hit. Uh, and then this is like they probably worked on it for like five years, and it's. Might be a waste. So somebody gonna uh, have to buy them. <laughs> yeah, somebody will. More than likely, it's gonna be Sony, which is fine. But um, I don't know if, if they got with Microsoft. I think Microsoft will let them do too much different. Uh, they need to they need to stay in a lane. So I need I need somebody like Sony to get them because uh yeah they might try to do some extra stuff and Microsoft like, okay, like, <laughs> this is not <like> garbage. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I think Saudi like, nah, we know what you need to do and what you need to do. I, I, I have no idea. Maybe this was a tag in with, um, Final Fantasy 15. Oh, not si what, fit 16. Yeah. Maybe this was like, oh, if we buy this one, y'all will give you Babylon too. And it's like, all right, fine. Because I don't think really they pay no good money. <laughs> <laughs> Sony, but Sony ain't no fools. They said, man. I mean, if that's like a little extra, I mean, I thought you a couple. <laughs> <laughs> but that's I don't think they pay it outright for this. So I think they're a little smarter than that. Pretty much anything that they have done, like content, like game wise, where they. Like they, they, it seems like the A and R is like really good at picking games that are going to be okay. 
you know, like to be exclusive. Like mm-hmm. I haven't really seen something where they was like they went into a partnership and the game was like hot garbage outside of Godfall. Um, and now I think Godfall was supposed to be a game that make him really show off the 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 graphics. It wasn't really yeah. meant to be a really good game, but Babylon, this is something that you got Horizon coming out. You got things like you don't need this game. This is supposed to be something that's actually fun. And it's just not. So that makes me believe that it was a tag along. And um, they just got to free me. And uh, they tarnished their name a little bit. So, hey, man, you got to take that on the chin. But uh, it is what it is. If you want to play Babylon, it's there. It's clunky garbage. Um, But it is there for you all to to see. Uh, But let's wrap up that segment there. And let's move straight into the next. Uh, What I want to talk about next. um, I guess it kind of still on brand. I want to talk about Sony, man. I ain't going to lie, man. Um, Horizon and Ratchet and Clank. It's probably my favorite games right now. It's like I was trying to play something. Um, Seventy dollars well spent. Huh? Seventy dollars well spent. That's what you said. Oh man! First off, I did the PS4 upgrade for for Horizon because I was like, I'm done. Nah, uh nah. So I paid sixty, <laughs> and uh, but then I also paid thirty. That's why I'm, that's why I'm talking about. That's why I'm talking about Rift Apart so late. I paid thirty five, no forty. I paid forty dollars on GameFly. Um, so, but yeah, man, when I play them, I know I'm gonna have a good time, bro. I, I never, I'm never disappointed. So, uh, Horizon, I, I, right off, I played that. I was like, man, let me get this. Let me put this ratchet and clank in. Man. Let me see what this is all about. And lo and behold, <laughs> another well polished, well done game. Uh, <laughs> From Sony, so I, I, I and I was thinking about it. I was like, man, you just can't, you can't find this nowhere else. You really can't. Not like well done, and you know, not trashy or got some stupid parts to it. Like the the closest you ever gonna get to that is like Gears on Microsoft, and just no. And after a while, you're just tired of the same thing. Um, there's nothing that really mixes it up. I mean, they could throw a big old desert and have you running around it, but it's all the same once you chop. So it's really difficult for fun games like that to be replicated. Um, even though you kind of like know what their formula is, still fun to play it. That's all. So when I was thinking about it and um trying to like you know have a conversation what to talk about during the podcast i was thinking myself because uh, i know i know josh probably hasn't played probably like 20 percent of the exclusive playstation games um and i know not Jaylen, first party probably, yeah you probably mm-hmm. like 20 percent. i would think right not even maybe <laughs> i wouldn't think you play many of them like any of their exclusive exclusives, like I know you haven't. I don't, I don't even think you beat Uncharted. You don't play the God of Wars. You don't play like you play Ghost. Um, you didn't play Infamous. You didn't play like I don't think you played any of those games. Am I am I wrong in saying that? Like twenty percent would probably be a good number um, for the amount of games you actually played versus not. If you're talking, I can't hear you, Josh. Oh, me? Uh, my bad. I thought you were talking about Jalen. Um, I played um some of those. Like for me, I was always more interested in Sony's like Japanese uh Titles. exclusives. Right. Yeah, because I, I feel like they had good partnerships with those companies and even stuff that I didn't really like, like Gravity Rush. At least it was like an interesting like little game that um I appreciated them making it. Um, whereas their AAA stuff, it's, it's a, it's a lot of things. Like I'm not really in the open world games. Like I'll play them, but like I said, there has to be like a strong hook that keeps me going. Like 
you know, I just like using this grapple hook, so I'm going to keep using it for 30 hours until I get bored. So that is not the draw, but I, I like the, their franchises. I just, how to put it, some of them are, uh, well, overpriced. Like, you, you know, the games might be really good, but $70 plus a $500 console, that's too much money that I don't need to spend right now on these games that are good, but I mm. can have fun playing other games. Um and then two, like I, I'll be honest, like not all of them appeal to me. Like I don't, it doesn't matter how good the story in Last of Us Two is. Like I'm not interested in that world or characters, so I'm not gonna put my time in it. Um, right. Horizon seemed interesting, but um, it's just a wait for me because like I don't have th- that type of money to invest into it. Um, I liked Infamous. I didn't play Second Son, but I played one, and I played their little uh, DLC from Second Son. I just never got around to buying it because, like, I think they was taxing on PS4 for a long time for it until it came to PlayStation Plus. Um, so it's not, and and that's what I'm really trying to get to. Yeah, I'll I'll play it's them. It's just a it's not mandatory not, for me. It's not a priority for you. You don't yeah. really care to play them, but you're not hating on them either, right? That's kind of how it is. It's really yeah. just like it's I, if if I have the time, if I if it's accessible, the price is right, and I have the time for it. It's fine, but more than likely, I probably want to play something else, want to do something else with that money or that time. So that that that's understandable. It's not like um, that that's totally fine. I'm more so, I guess, I was just trying to get a lay of the land of that. And then Jalen, I think, is just more so prioritizing what the content is. Um, I guess, right? You're not gonna pick up everything but you're going to pick up the ones that you're interested in right yeah that's that's pretty much it um have y'all personally played a playstation exclusive that did disappoint like from the play s4 era on yeah but disappoint how um in like um because I don't think they have any, I want to set a like... criteria for disappointment. Because disappointment mm-hmm. can be objective. I'm more so saying, like, either graphically, mechanically, or, like, technically. Like, did it disappoint oh, in that way? I know one that I liked a lot, but I know people didn't like was The Last Guardian. The Last uh... Guardian was a technical mess. That's true. But it was because and of the hair on the stupid thing. Was so. 15 exclusive? Or did that come to Xbox? 15? Was this, was yeah, not Final exclusive. Fantasy. It wasn't? Okay. It wasn't. I don't believe it was exclusive. If it was. Yeah, 15 it wasn't. Yeah, that, okay. I, I think it came to the Xbox as well. Yeah, same time. I remember playing a demo. Um, So, yeah, I don't believe it. That, that wasn't exclusive. Um, it's... So, I don't know, like, I didn't like um, The Last of Us, I, I didn't finish it, so I, I say that quality-wise, it was really good, but for me, it was a disappointment. Um, same thing with, um, it's a weird one, that Tsushima, like, I liked it a lot, and I think it starts strong, but I think it doesn't finish, well. like, follow through. Um, with but but was it a was it technically graphically or no take graphically it was it was perfect what was story like, wise was anything... it was weak and then like the open world I felt was weak like they had a, a couple good really good uh missions like go fight mm-hmm. this dude who throwing lightning at you mm-hmm. like everything else about the open world was not I- interesting or innovative other than it it's pretty gotcha. So, I guess for what I'm trying to get at is what, um, what what causes the because what causes the disappointment for me most of the time with with a game in general is the lack of polish. It's it's most of the time it's just a lack of polish. If it feels clunky, it feels like. Like, this doesn't need to be there. 
and it, and I'm constantly saying it to myself. That kind of puts me into a thing. I uh, the thought process of, okay, what was the developer thinking, and why is this here? What makes this fun about this game? Like, there's plenty of things that you could say don't make a game fun, but in general, there has to be like this under understood rule within the you know Sony verse that kind of that that that's forbidden to not happen. And that's what I think really sells. It makes people feel as if the game is better than what it actually is. So if you pull back these layers, right? But how do you, if you pull back these layers, you might say this game is crap because of this, this, that, and the third. But because it's so polished, it's like, it's like the most polished her in the world. Like, how can you be mad with the polish, that much polish to a game? It could be the worst. It could be like the most basic open world, but the polish of the open world makes the game better. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, when I say that, because Ratchet and Clank is literally just a ukulele. It's a banjo kazooie. It's a it's these games that kind of have this same formula, right? But for some reason, the caliber of Ratchet and Clank is lifted. Why is that? Is it simply because the polish? I think so. So if it wasn't as polished as it was, I probably would be like, dang, I didn't enjoy that that much. But because it's speedy, because the graphics look amazing, because it's like a Pixar movie, because of all of these ray tracing and everything going on in the in the in the game, it just like they got all this stuff to be fun, but also look this good the entire time through. I didn't have any glitches. I didn't have any weird you know stuff where I I couldn't progress. There wasn't like a a stupid um like like you know. Like, it wasn't like a progression wall anywhere in sight. There wasn't anything that I had to obviously go out there and do outside of the main story. If I didn't want to do the stuff, it's all optional. It it felt polished that I could have a good experience in this well-maintained world for the next 25 hours. Do you do now? Before I move forward, I guess I want to get your opinion, Jalen, because I know you said you want to play Ratchet and Clank, and I know you want to play Horizon. Uh, talk to me about some of your exclusives in the past that you have been disappointed with. Mm. I can't really think of an exclusive that I've really been disappointed with. Um. I mean, I don't, I don't play a whole lot of exclusives and stuff like that, but I don't, I don't have one that I can definitively say, but like, yeah, man, I've been a, I've been disappointed with this game or whatever. Uh, well, you mean for PlayStation or just any exclusive? PlayStation, because they're the only yeah. ones that this caliber is like. Everybody else, they, they, they drop the dud countless of times. But PlayStation, for the last PS4 to now, they have been sticking with the same formula, right? And it's form, well, but yeah, they've been sticking with this formula. So, which continue your thought? Yeah, I don't. I never played a PlayStation a game where I really felt like I was disappointed. Like off the top of my head, I can't. I can't really think of one. Um, have I played games where I was like, okay, that game could have been a little bit better? I mean, sure, but I haven't played one where I could definitively be like, that game was cheeks. Again, I didn't play that many either, though. So. Yeah, because. Returnal, in my opinion, was a dud for gameplay. Well, not for gameplay for me, but because it was, it was decently polished. The only thing that was really controversial was the fact that they didn't have ability to save the game, um, and they didn't have ability to stop your run and move to something else. I believe they patched that in. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but Returnal was butt cheeks to me as a game but i could not say i could not sit there and say that it wasn't polished in regards to the gameplay it wasn't polished in regards to um if 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 you want to talk about graphics fine it was it was more of one of those you know it felt like a uh twin stick shooter but at the same time it was all 3d and 
yes, the world had these weird, you know, these these weird places you were going. It's a smaller group of people, but it still felt high quality, and that's what they sold it as, even though it shouldn't be no seventy dollars regardless. But that's what they sold it as because they, it's like they went in and said, hey, this has to meet this, this, and this before you can sell it on my council, and you have to be able to you know, do the, meet these, meet these, you know, bottom lines here. And then that way you, you never have a technically a bad game, even though people might not have a taste for that game. People may not have a taste for said game here. Overall, when you look at the plethora of their games, you kind of be like, well, it's not for me. But if I had to play a game like this, I probably will go with an exclusive from Sony. If I had to play a Last of Us site title, I'm probably going to go with an exclusive from Sony. I'm probably not going to go elsewhere because I know what they're going to do with their stories. I know what they're going to do with their storytelling. I know what they're going to do with their kind of, with their graphics, with their gameplay. I know it's going to be polished to the gazoo. I, I guess that just can't be said for a lot of other people or a lot of other exclusives. I mean, not even other companies like publishers. GTA came out unpolished. Red Dead Redemption came out. It was, it was polished, but I don't, I don't know. I mean, who who's reached that caliber? Who has reached those 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 godlike uh, abilities, man? I don't know. I don't really know like mm -hmm. that because it's not really a. This game is so good. It's just that they did every little piece right. To the point where you can't hate on it. <laughs> and that's all that is. It's like, I can't hate on it. It's not like for me, but I can't hate on it. Because at least they did what they were supposed to do each time. Is that the winning? Uh, is that truly the winning formula? It has to be. I mean, that's, that's how they're winning. Because it's literally, yes... There may be one thing I didn't like about Horizon, which I still think is a that's a that's a solid nine and a half out of ten for me. But there's plenty of things in there that I could probably pick at. But because they did other things so well, they did these things and it was polished and I had a good playthrough. I didn't have to deal with any technical, you know, hoobla or whatever, whatever the case may be, it's elevated. Yeah, it could it could be it could be said that there may be better gameplay games out there, um, but the uniqueness of these Sony exclusives is that you, most of the time you ain't gonna have to deal with all the bull, and that's becoming more and more apparent. Case in point, Elder Nasty, um. I, I mean, I don't want, let's not talk about that first, but Elden Ring is definitely a topic I want to talk about, but, um, that's just another, that's just a point of reference there is that you can have everything going right for you and people would still praise it, but wouldn't that game be a 10 out of 10 if it was technically polished as much as a PlayStation exclusive, it would be the game of all games. It would it would be their Zelda, a Breath of the Wild. But right now, it's that. But it's like you got to deal with so much other crap that people just. I would rather not play it right now. I mean, I, I could play it because I got it for you know the the the, the, the VRR or whatever. I don't really care to, um, like. That is my sticking point. Obviously, there's other things like, I mean, if I play multiplayer, I got to pay $1,000 to get into a, a match with you guys, which is fine, I guess, because that's the world. And I know a few hacks to get a bunch of rooms, so I will be doing that. But, um, uh, but yeah, I just feel like there's a lot of hoops to jump through for these types of stuff. And sometimes there's technical things that don't need to be there that could cause a game to go from top tier 10 out of 10 to seven um and m imagine what the polish with that game could actually come out to be all that to say sony don't miss that's all i don't think they do they don't miss that often 
And if they do miss, it ain't really a miss. It's like a that one is a game you will pay for at thirty dollars versus <laughs> the full seventy. I just I just think they have a winning formula. I think they have a understanding of what the player base will want. It sometimes is it mindless. Yes, but sometimes it's just really a fun experience that you pay your money for and you deal with for a certain period of time and then it's over with. That's totally fine too. You can feed the masses in that way. And sometimes people will experience other games that they normally would not because of the how well polished their formula is. Um, there's plenty of people that will probably never play a game like infamous but because they're so polished and because that game came out with the ps4 and it was one of the more technical and you know nice looking games that was something that people went to they gravitated towards versus just 2k or whatever else they were playing so it it, it it's things like that that kind of continues to push the envelope that sony has a reputation to uphold um very maybe that's why they're so limited on what they actually produce but that which is fine. Um, I just wonder how long that would streak will last, honestly, of of that pure polish. Because you see the cracks in Horizon, you see the popping, right? Mm -hmm. Is that COVID or is that just the the, the A and R and the and you know the 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 actual quality control falling off? Like who 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 got fired? You know what I'm saying? Like who who who, who let that slide through? So. Uh, it's just funny to see because I think this is a uh, very, in it's interesting to me at least. What's y'all thoughts? I'm talking too much. <laughs> Man, we, we know you love your boys at Sony, but I no, don't love I think them you... though, but that's the thing. I don't love them, but continue. No, I think you're right that they have a winning formula, but I think ultimately for some people who are, I, I say for me, that it's not that it's they make bad games. It's that they're sticking to a formula that is that I don't have to worry about with other games. So, for example, like I like the old uh, God of War games; they were fun, and I played mm -hmm. almost all of them. And so, like I'm, I'm sure that I would enjoy the new God of War game. However, I, without having played it, I'm like, is this game going to give me? new or in innovative like gameplay because it's, it's never about the graphics for me like their graphics is always good and the story might be decent but like what about the game because like if the game is not really interesting then, then what why am i playing it um basically to say that uh when it comes to other games like i might won't even talk about like Elden ring like let's say you have something like Astro Chain, which is like this is a smaller Japanese studio. They ain't got a bigger budget. It's on the Switch, but the stuff that they're doing, I felt was more interesting. Just like, oh, look how creative they are! Like you can control two characters at the same time, and but you still have like all these different combos, and it's like a semi-open world. And you got all these side quests, and it's like I can see you guys are very talented and creative and not just following a template of we're going to have a triple A story because like there are also triple A tropes that are common. Whereas like if you don't stick to like a triple A game, you don't have to worry about the father daughter relationship or the father son relationship or like whatever. And one they get mad at each other one time. And so now they're missing for a mission and so now you gotta go find them and it's like or they get hurt and then now you gotta play as the kid like these are tropes that they use because they know it will get people emotionally invested but they're still tropes nonetheless whereas like i don't have to worry about any of that in elder ring it's just i play and like i just keep discovering stuff around every corner and it feels like wow i know i can't get this experience out of god of war even though god of war is probably on a technical level a much better game i mean like i, I feel like they do use tropes and stuff and i can see where you're going with, with that but i think the biggest thing i don't play all the playstation exclusives and stuff like that 
But I think the biggest thing that always get me, I'm I'm not I'm not like I guess I'm kind of like Deontay, like his standpoint with it. Um, I don't care about all the 4K, 8K ray tracing, HD. You know what I'm saying? All that type of stuff. But one thing that will drive me away from a game, and it's when I had the super buyer remorse back in 2014 when I bought Assassin's Creed Trash. I, I mean Unity. When the game started moving weird and frame rate started dropping and doing all that weird stuff it started pushing me away from the game because when i spend my money on the game i want to know the devs put their best foot forward with the game or whatever so i mean i guess if they using those tropes and stuff that's one thing that's one aspect but if they're going to take time to make sure these textures not popping in or um they're going to take time to make sure everything look chris no matter which angle you look at or Mm-hmm. These these jokers ain't finna hit T stances and mm-hmm. just weird things happening. Like the game just is crisp. Like mm-hmm. despite mm-hmm. it's just crisp. Like they you I'm looking for errors in this game. Now I'm like, man, this game can't be this crisp, bro. I'm looking for errors, bro. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh Alloy her her hair started moving a little bit, but <laughs> you know, you had I had to really look to see that. Like that's cool. I had to really look to see that versus in like, you know, Dark Souls one, you know, you go backstab and they reset they position cake fly up in the air and you know what i'm saying that type of stuff is ugly and i'm like i don't want to look at that because i i know for a fact y'all know there's something wrong with that and the fact that y'all not acknowledging that is is bothering me so i'm not saying as you know this is strictly a preference thing but when a game look clear and crisp i can appreciate the game way more than what it is like i'm not gonna say final fantasy 15 is is crisp and clear and stuff but when Noctis, like, one thing I liked when Noctis threw that sword and that, how fluid it was when he did that, like, that was, they actually, like, you know, games be messing up when they be trying to do that type of stuff, like glitches and stuff be happening. They had that down pat, and that was one thing I could appreciate the game because it was visually appealing. So, like, Ratchet and Clank, I really want to play that game. Like, Deontay, I'm not going to pay $70 for it, but I know Ratchet and Clank going to be appealing. Even the first one, when they remade it, it was $40. I said, I'll pay $40 because I know what I'm finna get. And that game looked it clean and crisp. And I, I played it already. I feel like, mm-hmm. you know, maybe it should have been $40. But seeing as much work as they put into the game to make it look clear, like the graphics, like the way that his teeth looked, his fur, all that type of stuff. I'm like, I'll pay $40 for that. That's cool because I can go pay $60 for another game and they got textures popping in. And every time you go into this area, the frame rate drop or Every time you hit X and jump up two times, the game wanna crash. You know what I'm saying? Like I can't, like, mm-hmm. like that don't make sense to me. So um, I think yeah. that's a huge component. I, but it's I not can see game. that. But like, their yeah, their games are immaculately polished and they are gonna run like 100 percent perfect most of the time. But like on the other end of that, realistically, we don't actually play those many games that are literally falling apart and most of the time that we do those are launch those are games right after they came out and they usually have some sort of online component and so like oh we gonna hop on uh anthem and it's garbage because they got all these technical issues and stuff like that and it's like realistically games are not most games are not in a janky place like even like the Dark Souls one example, like yeah, it's janky, but like overall the appeal of that game was positive because like it mo it worked most of the time. It's like and still like what I was saying, like it doesn't matter how good or how polished Ratchet and Clank is if it's not. Well, I, I mean even Ratchet and Clank is not a good example because I think Ratchet and Clank is still fun, but like Ghost of Tsushima, I didn't have any glitches and it was polished and it looked perfect. And I still got bored halfway through the game. Yeah, because that the it, graphics it wasn't appealing are not going to you. fix that. Right. No, I, I think that it it was appealing, but their strong points couldn't save the fact that they didn't actually put that extra effort into every single thing. Like all right. the extra it wasn't stretched the out over the entirety of the game. Yeah, and that makes sense because most and and, and that's. And that's that buy-in and that's that that ability to create and grasp to something that you actually enjoy. And as well as, but there was nothing technically blocking you from trying said game. 
It wasn't nothing that was causing you to feel like, okay, I'm I'm paying a game that's less than at the beginning because you felt this way, but it was more so at the discovery of continuously playing that you kind of had that realization that, oh, this is just another open world. They're trying to mask it with these pretty things, but it really doesn't benefit me in that way. Now, you can do that same thing and go through God of War and feel like, okay, this now you got different realms. You open it up to different stuff. You got different enemies, and you got things that you can actually fight, and maybe you maybe maybe that game actually provides you the full playthrough that you were looking for in Ghost, but you don't know until you actually play it because the game isn't being bombarded with constant stuff about how technically incapable it is like dying light 2 in my opinion shouldn't be so heavily bombed and be in review bombed because simply that it doesn't run well on lots of machines i just feel like there's sometimes there's these games that come out that i truly wish sony would have made that's all I, and it's not that they doing something wrong i'm not saying that what you're saying is i totally agree with you too josh like sometimes the games can get repetitive boring and they don't keep your interest i'm not saying that i'm literally saying that the the level of the entry level or the the ability to provide a consistent um a consistent experience for versus uh, other studios is really unmatched right now. It, even if it is a boring concept at, at the end of the day or something that you don't like and enjoy, I don't hate on, I pretty much don't hate on any of the games because simply if it wasn't for me, it's something for somebody else. And if it wasn't for somebody else, it'd be for somebody else. Because literally, even though they, 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 they kind of can make, they, they kind of stick with this whole plan um they sell and they sell in a way where people either can enjoy them and because because you know they they hold their value too these sony exclusives most of the time at least for the first 60 days they don't hold their value so if you want to try and resell it that's fine but it's more so about um providing that a uh, st stable experience across the board regardless of what type of game like if you know, if they were to make an anime game, I'll probably buy it because I'm looking for Sony's take on an anime game. Even though I've played probably plenty of them or something like that, or if I'm, I'm playing Tales of Arise right now, and that game probably is might be far exceeding it, but I just know when I play that game, they're going to try to either put that same spin on it create something to create something that they want to present to the world and when they normally do that they usually um they have that consistent um ability to kind of create a a overall solid game it, it may they, not they, be the best game it may not be the best in that genre but it's overall <laughs> solid and you only can really hate on it if you play it because when you look at it from the outside looking in like, there's not really much flaws there. But if I look out on the outside in right now at Dying Light 2, I'm looking like, bruh, this game runs terribly. And this game doesn't look the greatest. And it also has some type of, some, some, sometimes it has lots of glitches. Like, you, me and you were running through the world and people, you know, brother, zombies, T-stance, and then sometimes they'd be doing <laughs> other stuff. So, I understand what you're saying. And I understand all open worlds games can't be polished. But if you got a game that size of Horizon and it comes out and it's damn near perfect, I really can commend that. And that's and that's where I kind of say I I shoot them a little bail because it's like yeah I see it most I, of the time I see it and then I see they, it where what they do and it's just not the same. So it's like Drake, man. Drake don't miss. <laughs> Drake, Drake, and Drake that's misses, exactly but... why I don't listen to Drake. So, <laughs> yeah. nah, just fine. Nah, Drake but misses, I, I definitely, but he, <laughs> I get what what he's he overall band, like you know that level. So, I mean, um, like, I mean, I I think it's, it goes back to I forget what the saying is, but it's like the the you enjoy something more when there it's like a roller coaster. Um, like you can have a completely steady like high quality experience but uh people are might 
attach on to something more if the peaks and the valleys are like higher like yes playing oh, this one game it has technical issues and like it'll crash and like it'll kick you from the game blah 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 but the the high moments are also so high that it it kind of like leaves a stronger impression on you so mm -hmm. an example of that is like a sony game that does not fit that technical thing that you said which mm -hmm. is uh well a lot of people say bloodborne but like the last guardian like i like the last guardian a lot and i feel like it does it did a lot of really good stuff but it's mm -hmm. technical aspects and its controls were also the worst part of it and that's not typical of sony but nope. even regardless of that it's probably like the worst running and controlling ps4 exclusive i still felt that it was one of their best games that they came out with because i played through the whole thing and finished it and i really like the story and i like what they did even with those limitations Right. So I feel like I feel like if I can still like the game and people are t dancing everywhere, then I feel like it, it must have something special going for it. Yeah. Like that's not that's not that's I, not to discount any game that's different than that. I'm not. I don't want to discount them because I play Cyberpunk. I played. I'm playing Dying Light. I played like really, really crappy. I guess. Not really crappy games, but games that really shouldn't have that time of day because of how bad it could have been or bad how bad it was at the time. Um, I mean, there's plenty of times where I'm playing like a Far Cry game and there's a problem, but I don't care because I like the series. You know what I'm saying? It's not that it's not that I'm saying that I'm just and that's really I, can, I think you understand that it's just more so reiterating the point. It's just more so about. Um, the effect of that level of polish is that really what sales me on sometimes p trying something that I could have a problem with at a later time because I'm trying it and because I know the buy-in of this game in that company it's attached usually to decent decency and sometimes even greatness in my opinion, I, I know you don't feel that way, but I feel like they make plenty of great games um, that I could actually provide that I can actually do that buying. I don't like the, the reason why I was waiting for certain games to kind of come out with their technical analysis. Why Digital Foundry is up in the numbers right now is because literally every game has some type of problem that you have to look out for and no one wants to tell you until you actually buy it but when i play a sony game when i play a game in which horizon had problems and hey um if it continues to diminish i will be bringing that up at a future date but uh the the buy-in is that you're going to be getting a game that's exceptionally well done or at least above average um, versus when I go buy other games, sometimes I'm waiting for the technical analysis to come out to say which game runs better on which console, because that is a actual buying point in my brain now, because simply you have to go through why something is running well and not versus not. And that's, that's it's just, it's just like, it, it just ruins the experience for me, man. Um, and I get it that sometimes there's a gem under there. Um, I'm luckily that I bought cyberpunk on Xbox because I had the ability to switch between frame rate and what's the name, but on the PS5, you didn't have that option. You just had frame rate and you didn't have the ability to go up into a higher quality level. So you didn't have the ability if you wanted to go 4k or whatever. So it's just like those things really irritate me. And it makes me feel like the gaming community is just buying into it as if it's okay. When I... I stay and stand firmly in that it sucks, but and I don't think people buying into it. I just think it's like it's okay if it's a decent game. Like I don't think Elden Ring should be getting the pass. I stopped playing Dying Light until they patch it, and we stopped playing Ascent. We stopped playing um, Out the whatever the game thing. So I think it's All Writers. We like there's a reason why I played Destiny so much, even though it sucked. It's because literally they polished everything else around it outside of the grind. Like literally they 
they attempted to create a game that was fun to play. The gameplay was fun to play, and they did it on a scale that no one has ever done before. So Destiny. I don't know. Oh, if you got a point, go ahead and say it. Now, uh, before I had uh, got to finish, I was gonna mention Destiny is one of those games that got so much of my attention because of the way it looked, like the the fluidity, the gunplay, the everything was just like it wasn't it wasn't no like hiccups in the like the way the game looked appealed like visually. So I mean, clearly we know the gameplay had issues, but like. Visually, the game didn't. It had little to no hiccups. Like, I can't remember something crazy happened in Destiny. Where I'm just like, it's ugly, bro. Like, I mean, aside from you, you know, had the people... stupid, the stupid uh, gravity. But outside of that, <laughs> it's, it's like their physics gravity? engine was. Uh, you know, it's physics. Oh, you said uh, when you hit like when you hit a rock and you go flying, bro. But that, yeah, is, but I mean, it's part of the game at that point. It's not like it wasn't designed that way. Versus not. And if you play Halo, like that was the, the physics in that game was basically it was Halo. Um, it was like floating and stuff like it, like it plays similar to Halo. Um, I think one one question or not not a question, but something that you know, uh, I forgot what the original question was that you had asked or whatever. Um, what uh, was in it in regards to like what 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 kind of what games either missed or what, what kind of causes a game to be great and um, what causes a game to kind of get that buy-in. Um, there's yeah, plenty of Yeah, something along those lines. Between. Yeah, uh, basically, like, for me, y'all know I don't, I don't like to buy these games. I don't support these devs unless they making something as A1. Usually, if I'm looking at the game, the first thing I'm looking at is, like, a, a video or something. Frame rate was going on. Is something crazy happening as far as like bugs, T stances lagging, frame rate drops, glitches, all that type of stuff? Is it looking scratchy? You know, I'm looking at all that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. And that alone will help me determine if I'm a, if it's going to put me over the fence of, you know, I'm going to actually look more into videos of this game and consider buying it or being like, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to mess with this game. I'm going to have to wait till the price drop. And. Mm -hmm. Like like you said, Josh, there are games you, you play, like you said, Ghost of Tsushima. It looks nice, all that type of stuff, but it get boring. I've definitely been playing Uncharted before and get tired of when I get to the end of the game and then you get the armor dudes that come out and you got to shoot their armor off. They don't let you shoot them in the head. Like, I get tired of all that, bro. It's a trope. It, it, it comes back. Like, it's a reoccurring thing. Like, it's annoying. But they got me to get the game. And now at this point, I'm invested in stuff to go ahead and finish it because I made it this far into it. But I didn't never have any buyer's remorse. I can't name a time where I had buyer's remorse buying a Sony first party game. Granted, my I don't, I don't play as many, but I never had buyer's remorse buying a Sony first party game than I did if I bought like a third party game or something like that. I can I can honestly say that. Like, I ain't ever felt like I got beat. Like, man, they conned me out of $60, man. They did, got my money and they ran off with the plug. You know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't. I ain't never felt like that because I, I felt like what I paid for was worth what I paid for because of the time, money, and effort they put into it. Maybe I just didn't find enjoyment all the way through. Like, um, yeah, and, and yeah, that's my only point. It's always like a money investment, but you already know that for for games, like I'm not even thinking about it in like the money investment. Like, sure, like if I want to play the New Horizon there obviously is a money investment in it. And so if I buy it and I didn't like it, there would be some sort of like buyer's remorse. But like, that's not, that's why I don't go out and buy it because I would not rather risk that. I'd rather, oh, I already got the console. Uh, I'm gonna pick up the game and see if I like it and play it. But even even still, it's not, it for me, it's more about like time and it's not about like, oh, they don't deserve my $60. They don't deserve my time. And mm -hmm. It I paid like nine dollars for Spider Man on PS4, and I played it once, and like it's not a bad game. I just didn't care past that first five hours that I played, and it's not about the graphics. It's not about the polish. It's about actually playing the game at that point. And so I'm not even thinking about it. It's like, like I'm not gonna go buy a game because I like how it. Well, obviously, like yeah, the the art style and stuff does matter, 
but like I'm not gonna buy it because it has fluid animations or like it looks crisp like Ratchet and Clank. Like Ratchet and Clank probably has like the best animation ever and like real fur and all this stuff. And I don't care because I'm not buying it for the graphics. And like I that's just me, I guess, with like how I see it. So I Yeah, but I you're like the feel... anomaly. It's not like you're it's not like you're kind of the average person at all because the average individual and that's is why that's they, they have a, that's oh, why they ahead. have the formula because that's what works they, they get the average person to like look at what we made and it's going to have a certain level of quality and you should enjoy it but like so, i think that mm-hmm. just buying it based off their promotion is feeding into what they want and i don't really see how that is. But it's not their promotion that I'm buying into. It's not that they you they, are. They, That's they why put they the show what's the like name. Horizon but it's not because they put good. the promotion. It's not because they put the put the game out there as in. But it's more so about what I am avoiding by playing a Sony exclusive. You do. I guess that's what I'm trying to kind of get you. But where? To get to what talk are you to, avoiding? Like, what's the the game that I literally like, told you that you? that those games that I purchased. Sometimes. Like yes, you have virus remorse because you buy it and you put it in and it don't work right, so you got virus remorse. Like I understand that. Hey, I'm, yeah, but that's I'm like, and that's why I like Game Pass because of buyer's remorse most of the time when I'm buying. Okay, but games. let's say you remove the dollar amount from it and you put in the next Assassin's Creed game and it runs like trash and it's like there's no money value in it. And it's like, can you still enjoy the game even though it runs like trash? Like, well, is it interesting? No, so you take it out. Or yes, it's still interesting. And you play it, and like I don't see the avoiding the the technical issue because I paid my dollar as a benefit. So you don't you don't find value in polish? Is that what you're saying? At to be my purchasing decision, I'm gonna buy Spider Man because it's polished, and I'm not gonna buy. Um, so wait, wait, tales wait, of arise because that that it's like that logic kind of falls into a no, lot no, no, of no, I, areas, no, 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 no. You, you, I think you pushing into like a fallacy where it's like just because it's polished means it's good. Polish no, is not saying... the same thing. In which saying that if I have the choice between a super polished tales of arise, I mean super polished Spider Man or tales of arise, I'm gonna buy whichever one is the most interesting to me. Not Spider Man runs at 60 FPS. And he, you can see his pores. Hollow Knight, and uh, my, this might be uh, blasphemy, but Hollow Knight, in my opinion, and Dead Cells was a better game than Metroid. But Metroid I bought because of the polish and the level of quality that they put out when they come to their games. It wasn't because I felt like Metroid, I don't have an extension to Metroid, but there's things that that occurred, even though, you know, they don't have to promote it. I just know what they're going to do with their, their games. So I bought that game thinking I was going to have the same similar experience to the games that are mimicked it. So when I didn't, and I, and I, and I didn't finish it. I, I mean, I played like six hours, seven hours, and I was like, okay, I'm not interested, but I'm going to try to beat it because I want to make sure that I'm not just passing judgment because I, 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 I sometimes I do that because I want to, you know, have an unbiased opinion about certain things. But that was still a deciding factor for me. And, and it still is for most people. That's what I'm saying. It's not like... I, yeah, that and that doesn't make sense to me because graphically Hollow Knight looks better than Metroid Dread. Like Metroid Dread does not have the same level of polish that these other games have. Like the environments are pretty basic compared to other games in the genre. Like it for Metroid Boy, game, I, I would... like its gameplay and I like its boss fights, but its music and its graphics are not its selling point. So I don't see where the polish was like she has so... really good animation, but like it's not a polish Nintendo game, like I wouldn't compare what? that to Breath of the Wild. To Nintendo standards, Metroid Dread is in the polished game on that system because we know we got to no, gotta take because it to obviously you didn't get far enough into the game where you unlock the a bomb that you drop on the ground and kill everything and it drop your frame rate to ten every time you do it. Like 
no, it's not the same level of polish that Breath of the Wild was. And it's but not Breath the same of level Wild drops other frames, Metroid Josh? games were. They didn't drop the 10 every time you did the same thing. Yes, if you went down to that thing and blew up those arms, um, those bomb that things. It's not the same level of polish as the other Metroid I said games the when they came out. Of Nintendo. What's the standards on Nintendo, Josh? They have to work on their system. Their system is is a shit show, but they make it those games run as as best as they can on those on that shit show system. Am I wrong? Okay, so I I don't understand the argument. You saying Metroid was a super polished game, so you bought it. And to and Nintendo standards, look at, and that don't even make sense because Nintendo standards is like. Play Super Mario Odyssey like it looks way better than Metroid, okay, and I don't so I don't know what you're talking about. They make games look good on 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 a very underpowered on system. a Nintendo console. Splatoon sure, looks however, nice. However, Hollow Knight uh, side by side still looks better and runs better than Metroid Dread. It came out on a PC and a P. It came out on these consoles. Of course, it looks better. But if you play Hollow Knight on the Switch and you play Hollow, it still looks better. You play Metroid on the Switch. It does not look better, to in my opinion. I mean, that's my opinion, I guess. But that's not the point I'm trying to make. I'm trying to make. I'm trying to make the point of polish t- comes into play when it comes to a purchase, and you're trying to say it does not. And I understand your opinion as in, you know, to negate that and say, this isn't how I feel about it, but to say that it doesn't polish, matter. Polish as crazy. the reason to pull the trigger, yes. But, like, oh, I, I'm deciding between these two games and this one is more polished, so I might go with it. Like, sure, I, you can say that and I, I can understand that. But it's like, you're saying that the polish is the reason to play the game and that doesn't no really make sense. Like, yeah, I'm going I'm to go to this restaurant because it's the nicest restaurant in the world. They're going to wipe my hands and they're going to feed me the best food in the world. And I'm going to pay a, a premium dollar for it. Am I actually going to go do that every single day? No, because I'm pretty sure there's much better experiences elsewhere, even though they don't have the same level of quote unquote polish. Hey, I ain't going to lie to you, bro. I seen Dying Light. When Deontay was talking about Dying Light, I was like, I seen that game and I'll never buy it. But I ain't say nothing. I was just looking at it. <laughs> I seen them all like, yeah, and, yeah that's I, fine. Like, I, 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 I am, I, I, I am, um, I'm a loss for words. <laughs> I, I mean, you I, now, now you're trying to um, push it into where it makes sense, and all I'm literally saying is that why is polish the buying decision and not the it's quality? Not, like but it's the a quality factor. of the game. It's a it's factor, the, but you're saying it like it's eighty percent of the choice. Like that's what you're basically Gear arguing. Strive, I was literally like, that game looks fluid, and it's the most fluid looking. Yes, you know, it's the best looking fighter Dragon game they Ball ever Z. ever made, and Fighters. I didn't buy it because it don't matter. And I never I don't bought play it. fight games, but I don't play fight exactly, Josh. But it was a reason for me to engage the game. Do you understand that? Like. I, I feel like you're just missing the whole point of this conversation. The conversation is literally the state or reason for someone to engage a said because game. Because you, you, Jalen, are literally saying like, oh, man, I saw Uncharted 4 and I had to buy it. Look at all that polish. I'm like, cool. No, I ain't saying what that. It's just a, it, if we break it down into percentages, maybe that might weigh 60% of my buying decision. And that's 60 is still too much for me. I'm like, what about but the other forty percent? Like I you say, playing you the game like three hours. Josh, you're not thinking like a normal person most of the time. Not in that regard. But that anyway. doesn't even make sense because, like, it's not even a bit about being normal. It's like it. Sony figured out the formula, and I'm not normal because I'm not sticking to the formula. Fine. Yeah. But like, but... it's literally a formula for a reason. They they they're finding what's the best way to maximize people's interest. So they're gonna put those things in the game to get people interested. But I'm saying it's not always supported under that graphical layer or polish to mm-hmm. actually be to be self sufficient. Like, yeah. what's the point of buying The Last of Us Two and it looks amazing if you don't finish it? Well, because I'm, I'm you were like interested, the, in it. you but weren't the, truly the interested in the game. It? Yeah, and so you bought it because of polish, and they showed you the pretty graphics, and you bought the game. But right. that sixty percent. Obviously, in that situation, was too much, and you probably should have tried to look past the polish, see what was under. 
Yeah, but, but the, the thing that, is, there's two point, things to consider, though. Like, the the first thing is, when, when I say polish, I'm talking about everything. When I'm running down, throwing, about to jump up, when I'm about to throw a Nova bomb, I ain't, how much uh, input lag is in the thing, in the uh, controller or whatever, how much is the frame rate going to drop, the fluidity, when a Nova bomb hit is a hit. Like, all that stuff that comes into the game the, from the technical standpoint and our graphics and stuff like that, all that comes into play with polish. I'm not trying to it, it's just it's it's all those things because that that's what we want a new system for, right? We wanna we wanna have graphical enhancements. We want the game to look better. We want the game to run better. All that comes into play with polish and stuff. You can have delayed hit detection and all that type of stuff. The game not running right. That's an issue itself. That could be from a technical standpoint, or you know what I'm saying. You you may or may not be able to see some of these things. But when I say polish, I'm not just saying like I look at the sheen on his hurt. I look how many fibers he got. Yeah, that, that matters and stuff like that. But when I do something catastrophic, is the frame rate going to drop? Like, if I do this, like, oh, did you see that explosion he did? He he did a big bang command, man, blew up the planet. It wasn't no lag and stuff. You see the detail? Like, that look amazing. Like, people people care about that stuff. People keep talking about Demon Slayer. They keep talking about the animation and all that type of stuff. Like, we want stuff that's visually appealing to keep us captivated. But yeah, and it's super another- visual. It is. I mean, do you but, do you do you watch on another like? Oh, oh man, discussion? she bad. She bad. Y'all see her? Like, yeah, she is. She but that, bad. but that. What but about it? Understand what else? <laughs> appeal and all that that matters. Yes, though. that's like, the first like, thing that people get interested in, and that's, that's my whole all point. I am that's trying the first, to say. Yes, that's my whole point. That's like the I'm first crazy. thing that y'all. Because you say I'm, I'm an anomaly because I, I recognize that the first thing that people are interested in is the visual presentation. And my whole point is that, yes, I'm the anomaly because I've been playing games for like 25 years that I have seen the prettiest games come and go. And it's not just about the game being pretty. I mean, we say it's order. never we know been about was, just the game that being game pretty. Cold. We said the game pretty has and to polished. That's flew. the same thing. It has to work. It has to actually be able to. It's not even like it's not even like you're you're it's like this one dimensional thing of what you're saying is that the game because. Literally, I'm not saying Metroid Dread was the greatest looking game. I'm saying when I talk about polish, I know that company put their effort in the right places to make sure your experience was better than any, or at least try to make that experience better than any other Metroid-like game. So even if they try to do that, I'm not saying I couldn't find a prettier metroid that's not what i'm saying i'm literally talking about these there's like so many factors when it comes to polish but i think because you're just polish it is down some, such a nebulous word like you and jalen are just describing different forms of polish jalen but describing I literally every physical element this stuff with you 20 minutes ago about horizon and these other games i said technical but Deontay, I literally when, to when they first this. showed the trailer for metroid i literally said the game does not look good so i don't see how the visual presentation is such a high bar and it's such a thing called polish. However, what you're actually measuring the polish as is just some nebulous thing. Is that doesn't make sense? Oh, this is the Nintendo polish. What does that mean? I don't know. It's the Nintendo polish. It's not. It's okay. not. It's not. A, it's not a, I don't know. Literally, if I'm playing Mario Kart 8 on this system, it looks just like the Wii U, but it's it's considered new then that is what nintendo has decided to put out but in at the end of the day that is the best cart game i have ever seen regardless because most companies when they come out with these cart games they don't put too much effort into it like nintendo will do but even though it ain't the highest frame rate it ain't the highest um it ain't had the highest pixel count and it that's what have- i mean because you're so saying you're claiming it's Nintendo saying? Polish, but it doesn't make sense because Mario that Kart is Nintendo. What? That's what Switch they can do. That's what they can thrive for. They're what not trying to go about? to a Sony Polish. They can thrive yeah. for what they're doing there. They, they, can, Anyways, they can thrive in that. The point is, when I say Polish and stuff, if you make a I game... I guess I shouldn't say Polish. I should just say... I effort. should just give Let's you just examples. If, if you make a game and somebody go walk out would you feel would you feel 
good about a game where you can see they fiber, they hair and stuff. Like, you know, I really did that. Or if you backstabbing somebody and they cape fly up in the air and they reset their position. Like the fluidity, like which you know that doesn't want... apply to me because Dark Souls is like my favorite game and that game is super glitchy. I mean, and it, I... it doesn't matter about yes, I like lag backstabbing people because it, it made it a part of a fun part of the game. Because you actually understand I... Oh, this person is lagging, so it's some weird shit about to happen. It's gonna be fun and funny. No, I, I get that. Like, and that, and that's fine. Like, I, I I think that stuff is funny too. When the glitches, I think glitches are funny. You know what I mean? But if you're making a developer, I mean, if if you're a developer and stuff like that, is that something like, yeah, I'm gonna make sure his cape fly up in the air and he reset for like, is that a goal that you have or you want the when you you make your stuff? Do you want the stuff to be as fluid as possible, or you don't care if it's scratchy or? You don't care if they reset weird positions or hit like. Do you care about that stuff? Literally, the answer is some of that stuff doesn't matter because, like, think about it. They got five years to make the next Dark Souls game, and they were been working on it. You gonna run into a new issue every day, and some of that stuff is just gonna have to be left to the wayside. So, like, I can't fix the cape because I'm too busy making this boss fight. And so, like, yeah, what's more important? I'd rather have the boss fight than, than fix the cape. Well, I'm not saying what's more important and stuff, but if you are, but that, if you are that's able to literally that. what it comes down to in development. What's more important, and that's why you get games the way that you do. However, okay, so, there are other games that just don't care and will just release the game six months early, like Dying Light, or it's like, oh, we could have fixed it, but they didn't give us time. Okay, so with that being said. Am I going to give Dying Light their money or am I going to get Horizon their money? Because Horizon I doing some of the same stuff that Dying Light is. Like, I Why give either one of them your money if you're not actually interested? Like, Don't give it to Dying but Light you, because but you're I, not I never, interested never, in Dying Light. Said, not because of the glitches. Said, but I never said that. I, said, I stated earlier before when I look at a game, when I see the videos, what I said happens next. I said I'm gonna either that's gonna either going to put me on the side of more likely to buy or it's going to be like I ain't giving this game my time. It but would. you already said like you you don't like zombie games and you don't like first person yeah. Mirror's Edge games. So why is Dying Light even an option? And it's not because of the glitches. That's my whole All point. Right, Dying Light could have been perfectly glitch fine and had a good story, and that doesn't mean that you're interested in the game. All right, let's say it Bay doesn't Bay matter about the fall. You know I'm a Square Enix fanboy. Look how that game look, and I, I could tell from the first thirty seconds I was like I ain't interested like that. The armor, you know what I'm saying? I'm like Final Fantasy, and I'm seeing how they move, and I said, no, I ain't buying it. Because they ain't put that much effort into the... I can't... Like, let me say, I, I can't say if they put effort in it to definitively. I don't know what happened, but whatever came out, whatever whatever came out wasn't something that showed me as an external person that's not in the know that they tried to put effort in without me doing research, figure out what the developer's thinking, what, side, what type of calamities going on within the studios and the public, like... From an external standpoint, as a consumer, I'm just looking at that, but like, no, they're not getting my money. But I can look at something else, like Destiny or something, like, oh, that look clean. Okay, that look clean. I'm a little interested. Let me look more into it. Okay, they got some polish. They they got some effort. They look like they're putting in. Let me give it some more time. So basically what I'm saying is, yes, it, it weighs a lot in, but it's not a end-all, be-all, like, y'all finna go cop this game right now because... This, this, and that. You know how I am about money and stuff like that. And the point that I'm trying to make is, if a game is trash looking, it rules it out. It's going to have to be something that's radical that pulls me back in. Dark Souls 1. I completely ruled that game out when I played it the first time. I only played it the first time because my friends begged me to and they let me play it for free. Ruled it out. I said, this game ugly, bro. I don't want to play this game. This junk cheeks, dog. I just got done playing The Last of Us. I'm not playing that. But... It took a whole bunch of stuff to roll it back in for the game. I ain't even, I still ain't even beat Dark Souls 1 to this day. But I played the sequels and stuff like that. You know, it, was, it, it took a lot more effort to get me back into the game. Versus Ratchet & Clank or Horizon or something, Deontay said, check Horizon out. I look at the game. Hey, this game pushing. This pushing P. Let me go ahead and check it out. Like, I'm going to look into it. So I started doing a little bit more research and then the game going to sell. Man, I'm going to go ahead and copy what I got to lose. This game look like it's cold. Like, so it's just a, a it's a deciding factor that can rule the game in or make me more likely to spend more time looking into the game to determine if I want to get it. Not saying that I am going to get it, but it's you just something that made me think play Near Automata gameplay. You know why? You know, you know what I you know what I felt when I finished it. 
disappointment. It's plenty of times where you play games for other reasons other than what I'm stating. I'm just stating that that is the most com that's the most common thing that someone wants to play a game that's actually done well. That's and I and I, I and it sound like you play games even if they suck. <laughs> you just you just don't care, and that's fine. I do too. I ain't gonna lie. I, I play Digimon. You know what I'm saying? I know them games look cheap. Like they ain't put no effort into these games. But you did. I, you think I'm gonna pay money for them? <laughs> you think I'm gonna find another way to get these games? <laughs> like I, I can't consciously I just, feel good. I truly, <laughs> I truly wanted to get out of here at a, on a on a good time. So, um. I did not expect this to go away. I thought it was going to just make a solid point that they do things. Yeah, they make good games and their games are polished. But I, my whole issue is like y'all saying sixty percent, and that's just a weird number to me. But it's fine. It's not sixty percent for me, but it's a number. It's a it's a meaningful step to get someone to buy in. It's just a more so a meaningful buy in and. And it's not even the graphics. It's more so that the game runs well, and that it doesn't. It's not like a Battlefield 2042. The reason why I bought Modern Warfare Call of Duty, the first one in a very long time, is because the gameplay, the way it looked, fluidity, style. I I I decide, It was a deciding factor for me to buy Modern Warfare. I feel like they actually did make a change in the right direction. Yes. It looked it nicer than the rest of the Call of Duties, but at the same time, they at least attempted something different. And yes, it was a deciding factor, but did I enjoy Call of Duty to the point where I was playing it daily? No, I did not. Because it, at the end of the day, it's still Call of Duty. I thought they were trying to go back to a different pro approach. The maps were okay. It wasn't the best. But then you know what birthed came out of that? Uh... Something that a lot of people play now that I I still don't attend and I don't enjoy, but it's it, something it birthed something that uh that uh whatever it's called warfare or whatever it is, um I forget what it's called now. It's the now you trying to act like you acting brand new. You know what Warzone is, man. Warzone, no, no, no. warfare, I mean, Warzone. Warzone, like that, man. Call of Duty Warzone that came out of that and a lot of people play it. It's it's fine. I just there's times you play where that game gets, polished. <laughs> nah, that that game. That game ain't polished. polished. That game is just like I was playing PUBG because it was polished. <laughs> nah, nah, I wasn't playing PUBG uh, either. <laughs> I played Apex. That's the first one I played because I well Fortnite because y'all said it's probably the most Fortnite uh, is polished. Yeah, it was probably the most polished uh, battle royale, and um, yeah. It's just not the one for me. So I went to the one where we get glitched out, we get kicked, and we uh, most of the time can't even get in the game. But I, I, I enjoy it for those reasons. Um, and that's what it is. But, yeah. I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know where this is going to end, but I'm going to end like this. We all can agree. Uh, and we all can disagree. There's no problem with that. I feel like we both made valid points, and I understand. Josh is always on the on the uh, on the side of great games, and I'm always on the side of great games as well. So let's leave it at that. Uh, hey, and you see, you see me playing Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. That game was, you know, what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> having the time of my life they, playing that. Boy. They they put anything with dragon on the top of it. You buying anyway? So hey, I'm, I'm playing like play this game, but like, man, why Goku hair was like that? It's hard for the used to be. They man, say, man. oh, <laughs> they said, man, man, get that man a Goku character. You know what he gonna do? I said, man, dragon quest me up. <laughs> Bro, I'm like, man, that dude with white trunks, man. I'm like, these graphics ain't the best, but I'm gonna play this much. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we know you, 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 you was, you was a little modest with that 60%. You were definitely 80, 85%. You right. were definitely 85%. With the polish? Because them, the... them Dragon Ball Z games don't be polished. Right? Them Dude, die. You, I'm playing you, you, colors, bro. you take one thing. It don't have, it could be the smallest thing. It, you would take that and that's what you would use as your buying decision. Nah, yeah, you. It, the polish ain't, that, that mug be fluctuating, bro. That polish might drop to 1%. percent i would be like... Man, but they got Sonic on this. Bro, I'm getting this, bro. 
Man, Jalen be funny. Me and, me and Deontay be playing the game. We're like, oh, we should get Jalen to play. I'm like, nah, he gonna see this spawn animation. You're like, no. Nah. <laughs> yeah, that's all you hey, do. Hey, you know man. those spawn animations don't that's put me to sleep, bro. I'm gonna see that. I'm gonna see a dude spawn in midair and hit a T sense. I'm like, yep, I'm going to sleep, bro. I ain't yeah. seen enough for the day. Meanwhile, I'm over here running through the same robots on Sonic and <laughs> glitching and sliding across the map, having the time of my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's, that's Wait, man, this game is great <laughs> that's hilarious <laughs> this is but, a good game yeah uh, about that about but well, we we gotta end it um thank you guys for listening as usual we'll be back for more topics um in the future uh if you got to this part i uh, really appreciate you for listening and we will talk to you guys in the next video Peace.